Direct Connection is made by MPT to serve all of our diverse communities and is made possible by the generous support of our members. Thank you. Live from Maryland Public Television, this is Direct Connection with Jeff Salkin. Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in for Direct Connection. Tonight, we're going to cut through the gibberish to find the gadgets and the gizmos that are going to light up somebody's holidays. Joining us to answer your tech questions tonight is John Moffat of Best Buy. John, thanks for being with us. Hey, thanks for having me, Jeff. Something like $100 billion is going to be spent on technology gifts this holiday season, and, and a lot of it at your store. Absolutely. No doubt about it. Incredibly popular this holiday season. Let's get uh, you brought a bunch of stuff that, yes, that we all can the talk, goodies. talk about, and we're going to answer, answer people's questions about things that continue to get more complicated, like buying a TV. <laughs> but to start with, uh, a couple of things that really didn't exist up until a couple of years ago, if not more recently, the big TV, it looks like a, it looks like a giant tablet <laughs> or an iPad on a, on a post. What is that? Yeah, you almost got it there, Jeff. So these two items are the Portal by Facebook, a new item that they're releasing for the holiday setup this year. Um, they're kind of taking video chatting to a whole new level, uh, virtually like being there in the home. And the way they accomplish that is with the smart camera on both these guys. So not only are you video chatting when you're in front of it, but while you're moving about the room, whether you're cooking something in the kitchen, it follows you around. It can detect motion. Um, and even a step further, they actually have Alexa built in. So all the cool things Amazon Alexa can do from looking up recipes to setting up multiple timers to make sure you never burn those holiday cookies, uh, you can do with the new Facebook portal. It's pretty awesome. This was the kind of equipment that, that a lot of companies had in executive conference rooms a decade ago uh, with a lot of wires and, and big boxes and all sorts of uh, ISDN phone lines. All, all this stuff is Wi-Fi and, and easy setup. Absolutely. If you have Wi-Fi, you can use these systems. The hardest thing I always tell people is knowing your Wi-Fi password. It's as easy as that to set it up. Who's it going to appeal to? Because people can do some of this in, in other ways. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think the biggest target mark for this is families, um, especially seniors that live away from their families. Um, because it's so easy. Anyone can use voice control. So though it might team, seem a little daunting that it's a technology and large screens, it's very easy. If you got a voice, you can communicate with this thing and communicate with your family, all through voice commands. So now, it's pretty cool. We've seen the little uh, Alexa gizmos. And yeah. There's some different companies that make uh, the smart speakers mm -hmm. that you talk to. Mm -hmm. uh, do you like that? I love Do them. Do you have they, one? They make my life easier. I buy tech that makes my life easier, and those voice assistants definitely do that. I'm in, all about those. In what way? How do, how do you? I'm curious, because I, I don't. I'm, I'm not talking to inanimate objects yet at this stage <laughs> of my life. What, what, what do you use it for? For sure. So really two things. One, the argument always comes up, oh, who was the 22nd president of the United States? Cool. It tells you answers like that to common questions. Um, but the really cool part is the smart home aspect of it. So I personally use it for smart plugs I have for my nightstand lights. So when I'm going to bed at night, I just tell Alexa to turn off the lights. I don't have to get out of bed or take the blanket off. Nothing here, just all with my voice. So I love the smart home aspect of it. And that's what's gaining in popularity like crazy. Does it bother you that the thing is listening to you all the time? <laughs> so privacy is always a concern. It's only listening when you give it its voice command with that, hey, Alexa, or whatever one you're using. So nothing bothering me too much. They got it pretty tight as far as privacy goes. You just can't name the, the dog Alexa. Or, you can't, yeah, oh yeah, right. you're be triggering that thing all day long. <laughs> all right, so the, the home automation stuff mm -hmm. brings us to the, the doorbell, which is yes. something else where the technology has really changed over, over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. So this guy is the Ring Doorbell Pro. It's a doorbell replacement, but it does more than just let you know when someone's at your door. It actually has a camera built into it. Um, the really nice thing about these guys, especially right now, is while you have all these packages coming to your house, you can make sure they're only going in the right hands. Um, so security is important to everyone, and securing your home is no different. So always being able to see who's coming and going, no matter where you are, because again, these guys connect to your Wi-Fi network, which means if you have a smartphone, you can see who's there no matter where you are. You see this stuff uh, online, on the news constantly. Mm -hmm. Some Somebody, we call them porch bandits or something. Right, or exactly. Lifting <laughs> the packages. Um, and so, so let's talk about where the video goes, because yeah. couldn't the bad guy just grab that while he's grabbing the package? See, a lot of these guys actually secure to your doorbell and fix in a really particular way. Um, so they have a secure housing that's actually drilled into the wall. 
Um, so though it's possible, but I don't think these porch bandits really bring their 12-bit drill set to actually remove it. So you're in pretty good hands. Not, I've never heard of any actually walking off. Um, but that's how it stays secured on the wall there. And the other thing is that the video is transmitted in real time up to the cloud or someplace that mm -hmm. can't just be carried off. Absolutely. So it's all internet-based, so you can look at those uh, videos no matter what time they happened, um, all on your smartphone, but only you. Let, let's look at the, the back of that, just sort of twist it to sure. the camera so we could talk about the installation. If anybody's ever replaced a doorbell, there's two wires mm -hmm. uh, that, that power it. And this is very clever. I mean, it was designed to use the same two wires. Exactly. It's meant for consumers to be able to use themselves. So um, that means there's no battery? Because so, it's getting power. Very good question. Um, though they do make models of these guys that use a rechargeable battery. So even if you don't have a existing doorbell to hardwire it to, you can go with a battery operated model, in which case it does use a rechargeable battery. Um, this particular model, their Pro Series, is only hardwired, which means you never have to fuss with removing a battery. Um, it's always going to be receiving power. What's, what's the companion uh, piece next to it? The, oh, this little guy. The white thing with the two antennas. Yeah, so my little antenna friend over here. This is the Chime Pro. Uh, this guy does two things. One, it solves for the uh, most common issue with our Ring doorbells, which is poor Wi-Fi networks. These guys run entirely off Wi-Fi. And they go on the outside of your house. Usually the internet is not the best out there. It's not uh, optimized for outside. Exactly. So this guy boosts the signal to the doorbell to make sure you have perfect connection all the time. Um, and it also, it also is a audible way to hear someone when they're at your home. So your phone is alerted, and this will also make a sound notifying you if someone's at your door. Let me uh, remind our viewers, if you have a question about any of this technology or any other technology you're thinking about for the holidays, give us a call. We'll have the number up on the screen. You can also email your questions. The email address is livequestions at mpt.org. So everything is Wi-Fi. Oh, yeah. So the, the, the quality of your Wi-Fi network becomes pretty important. Definitely. It's detrimental for all these. With the poor network, they don't all work together as they should. Um, but at Best Buy, we sell more than just the products. We sell the networking to support it. So even if that is the issue, we can take care of it for you. Everybody's used to having, uh, if, if you have uh, cable, if that's where you get your internet, uh, maybe it comes with a router that, that has Wi-Fi built in, and that's all you've got. Mm -hmm. For, for more challenging situations, what can you do? Yeah, so good question. So a big issue with the networking standpoint we're at right now in people's homes is range. Um, so though they might have really good network when they're right next to their router, um, that computer in the basement or TV upstairs oftentimes doesn't have the best connection. Um, the latest in networking is what's called whole home mesh networks. They're actually comprised of multiple routers. They call them nodes. So two, three, four nodes to accommodate whatever square footage size a home you have to make sure that that internet signal that's really great when you're next to the router, you don't sacrifice no matter where you are, even if you're out front by the door. Very good. Let's, uh, let's take some phone calls. Michael in Baltimore County, thanks for the call. Go ahead. Hi, I was wondering if John had any recommendations about warranties for these products. They all look great, but just wonder, uh, you know, I really don't want mine to break right after Christmas. Do you have any tips for uh, making sure these things stay good? Thanks. Thanks very much. I mean, they all come with a warranty. Absolutely. So really good question, Michael. Um, these guys, well, a lot of them will have one year limited manufacturer warranties, um, but we actually protect these guys ourselves using our Geek Squad through Geek Squad Protection, which we offer on all of these products. Um, so we'll support them for a minimum of two years on those plans to make sure that they're always working um, at all times for you. And any issues, bring them into the store. We can solve it for you. Uh, I like your store. It's just down the street from the TV station, mm -hmm. but you cannot get out of the store without somebody trying to sell you a warranty. I think I bought a, 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 the jumbo pack of M&Ms once. Right. You like a warranty with that. Yeah, that you're not going to last that long. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's very important, definitely. Uh, Howard County, this is Joe. Uh, Joe, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Hey, uh, thanks for coming on, John. You're doing a great job. Uh, I just had a quick question about the Ring doorbell. Uh, my question was, is it constantly recording video, or is it just a live stream that uh, you can constantly check in on? That's a great question. Oh, Thanks. Really good question, Joe. Um, so this does two things. You can always tune into a live stream of it using your smartphone, in which case this will turn on, and it will, you can view whatever footage is in front of you there. Um, but also, it's recording anytime it detects motion. So that way, it's, it's not always recording. When it detects motion, it kicks on to make sure that you will be able to see exactly what happened. Um, and that is actually saved in the cloud. So even if you're not looking at it as it happens, you can look back a couple days, a day, whatever you need to actually view that footage. What if somebody has uh, a couple of entrances they, they want to protect? Mm 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've seen I've seen all sorts of cameras. Mm -hmm. Uh, some, you know, focusing on night vision. They have the little infrared uh, sure, yep. lights in them. W what do you like? Yeah, so really good question. Um, these are really awesome for the front of your house, but just like you're saying, we usually need our security needs more than just in the front door. Um, so all of these companies, Ring included, make a variety of indoor and outdoor cameras. And what's really cool, especially with Ring, is they all use the same app, which means that using it and viewing the footage is really easy to do um, and make sure that's all in one spot for you. Let's take a call from Baltimore City. This is Courtney. Courtney, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Hi. Um, I'm just wondering what the difference between the Apple Watch and the Samsung Galaxy Watch is. I've heard both are great. Courtney, thank you. So let's talk about the Apple Watch. Yeah, definitely. Um, so this guy on the table is the Apple Watch Series 4. It's the latest Apple Watch uh, from Apple. Uh, but the question as far as the difference between this guy and the Galaxy Watch. Uh, Galaxy Watch is made by Samsung, for those who don't know. And it is a really awesome wearable when it comes to a, a person that uses an Android operating phone. Uh, when it comes to a phone running iOS by Apple, like an iPhone, the Apple Watch is a must. Um, only the Apple Watch will give you the ability to um, interact with your phone in terms of actually receiving a phone call and talking on your wrist. Um, and responding to text messages. Um, so that Apple Watch and iPhone pairing is a match made in heaven. Uh, but the Galaxy Watch works even better when it comes to those Android operating phones. No matter which one you go with, it's awesome. Just depends on really what phone you have, which one to go with. We were, we were talking before the program about how uh, internet addiction, work addiction, email addiction has changed from uh, this to people wearing the watches constantly doing that. Exactly. It's it, new it buzzes norm. or something <laughs> to let you know. That it, yep. It can either make a sound uh, or buzz if you're just in a meeting, what have you. Um, oh, yeah. That's, that's right. how it works. Speaking of emails, let's uh, look at some email questions. W what's your recommendation for a TV sound bar without Bluetooth? Without Bluetooth. Well, okay. let's let's explain what the sound bar is. It goes under the the TV. Yep. And and actually, um, the the TV set that I have at home, the speakers are in the back, right. which is not good for sound. Right. The picture is terrific. <laughs> it never but the sound's is, yeah. a little muddled because it's it's bouncing off the wall. Exactly. So audio is something a lot of people don't think about when it comes to a TV. And the bad part about how thin these TVs are getting, or the speakers kind of take a hit there. Um, so sound bars are a must. Uh, when it comes in terms of sound bars, my favorite is the Sonos Beam. Uh, so Sonos is actually a whole home audio system you can get from different speakers as far as the rooms you're putting it in. Um, but they also make a sound bar. And what's nice about it is it's pretty small, but delivers a really powerful sound. Uh, so Sonos would definitely be my recommendation for sound bars. What should you expect to pay for a sound bar? Um, sound bars will start around the, the neighborhood of $99.99, um, just depending on the quality you're looking for. Obviously, they can go up from there. Um, always check BestBuy.com for the latest pricing and sales, but we always have one to suit a customer's needs. And how do they connect? So the, the viewer mentioned Bluetooth. Yeah. Can you plug it in? Yep, in, in general, we were also talking before the program about uh, connecting uh, smart TV devices to your, your home Wi-Fi. And, and it seems like in cases when I've been able to use Ethernet to go straight to the router, yep. it's happier. Yeah, nothing can beat a corded connection. Um, but as far as how the sound bars actually connect to a TV, the traditional way is one of two, either a digital optical cable or an HDMI cable. Um, whatever that hookup is, most of the time they will actually come in the box, and that's just a corded connection, so we don't need to rely on Bluetooth in that case. All right, Bill writing in wants to know how much this stuff costs. So we talked about the sound bar. <laughs> yeah. Price range on any of this stuff, the doorbell, the, the cameras? Yep, um, so our doorbell is actually this specific bundle right here is on sale, starts at about $199. Um, that is a current sale price. Always BestBuy.com is the best place to look to see when those sale prices end or if they're going on right now. Um, the portals right here start at $199. Uh, my Bose headphones in front of me, $349. New Apple Watch Series 4 start at $399. Um, and my Nintendo Switch gaming console start at $299. I like the, the live pricing. That, that's, that's pretty it. good. That's it. Down to the cent. Let's talk about the headphones. Are those yes. noise canceling? Yeah. So these are the Bose QC Quiet Comfort 35. You put headphones. them on. Let's oh, take yeah. a look. Let's, Let's model get them, them on head here. <laughs> Um, so these guys are for the traveler on your list when it comes for that but that gift you got to give them. Um, they have Bose's world class noise cancellation. Um, that is what these guys are known for. Um, so everyone knows the Bose quality, but their noise canceling is really what sets these guys away from the rest of the pack. Um, so whether you're on an airplane, on a busy commute, or even if you just need some me time after the chaos of the holidays, these are a must have. It is a terrific TV ad. Uh, it's Aaron Rodgers. I don't know if it's yep. Bose. Oh, yeah. I don't it's know if it's guys. Bose or something. Is it? <laughs> yep. Uh, back to the phones, Howard County. This is Myra. Thank you for the call. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, recently, 
I was at the Sony website, and I ran across this item that I was shocked. It was a light bulb that is actually also a speaker. Have you uh, any knowledge about that technology? Thanks for the phone call. I've seen light bulbs that are internet connected yeah. light bulbs, but, but also speakers? Light bulbs that are a speaker, I can tell you it's not an item we sell in store. Uh, so it's not too common enough that we actually have those. It might be something we carry on our next, website. I'm next not too Christmas, sure. Next Christmas, you're going to be here talking about... I think that's the, the new light, idea. I'm light, going to have to bring those in. It's going to be a light bulb <laughs> that talks to you. Right. There we are. Yep. <laughs> okay. Gaming. Yes. I want to knock that down. But uh, so we, it sort of looks like a mini tablet with, mm -hmm. a, with a couple of uh, joysticks. Yeah. So what what's do we really have? cool about this is this is a Nintendo Switch. Um, this is not only a traditional console that works with your TV, but it also can be used on the go using these Joy-Con controllers that snap to the side. So whether you're gaming on your TV on the big screen or if you want to use it to go, a Nintendo Switch is awesome. Um, the other really cool part about these consoles is they have a huge expansive library of single player and multiplayer titles. Uh, most recently we actually have Super Smash Bros. Ultimate over there in front of you. Um, that's going to be one of the most popular new multiplayer games. Um, it's, it's fun for the whole family and that's really what this has to offer. We should really talk about, this could be a whole other program at some point about how gaming is changing. Mm -hmm. I mean, down the street at Stevenson University, it's become a thing. It's a competitive thing between Definitely. universities, and, and it's driven in part by the, the faster, better technology, but, but also faster data going back and forth. Yeah, definitely. Major League Gaming is, is definitely here to stay. It's a very competitive atmosphere. Okay, so have we exhausted what you brought with you? I think we've talked about just about everything. All right, well, let's talk about buying a TV set. Sure. Uh, because it gets it gets more complicated. You have to decide <laughs> if you want. Are there are there even still dumb TVs? Everything is smart. There TVs. are. You, you can still you get could, yourself a dumb TV if you, you want. Which is basically a monitor <laughs> that you would connect to an antenna or a cable box. Exactly right. But within the smart TV universe, there's different brands. Do you want a Roku? Do you want a Fire, which is Amazon? Yeah. Are there others? Um, the Roku and the Fire are definitely the most popular ones. Uh, my personal favorite is the Fire um, because it actually gives you a voice remote where you can speak to Alexa through your remote. It's just a really cool thing that they add over the rest of the guys. Um, and then, of course, it gives you access to all of your favorite apps, whether it's Netflix, YouTube, Hulu. It's all right there. How does Apple TV fit into that universe? Yeah, really good question. So Apple TV kind of takes that but to a next step. So an Apple TV can do a couple things. It can make your dumb TV smart. So even if you have one of those TVs, you now have all the same apps that someone with a smart TV has. But with the Apple TV, it is a full app store, which means that even if you want to use more than just the traditional, your Netflix, your YouTube, there's tons of free and paid for apps that you can download and have on your TV. Prices have come way down on what, what used to be considered a big TV, something, you know, 40 inches or, or thereabouts. Sure. Yep, the, the pricing has definitely dropped. The new technology when it first came out on the scene a few years ago was astronomically high, but now, I mean, everyone has these ultra high definition TVs now. They're affordable for everyone in multiple sizes. The, the thing that it seems like maybe there's a little bit less of is the um, curved screens. Yeah. You see some, mm -hmm. and 3D television, which yes, seems to have there's hardly any fizzled. anymore. Not in my store, definitely. <laughs> It went, it went the way of the VCR or something. Yeah, didn't catch on too much. Um, now people are really just concerned about that sheer picture quality that makes TVs so great. The 3D was cool, um, but kind of wasn't here to stay. Do, do you sell many uh, virtual reality headsets, um, augmented reality? Yeah, they're very popular, especially for that gamer. Uh, back to the phone. So let's go out to Anne Arundel County. This is Henry. Henry, thanks for the call. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, my question is, I just bought a smart TV, but yet I don't have cable or internet, but I'm using an antenna. And I also purchased a uh, Bluetooth speaker, and I was trying to hook it up. I didn't get my stuff from Best Buy, but also I appreciate Best Buy, but it's a little pricey for me. Uh, no uh, problem on that one. But uh, I just want to know, how can I hook my stuff up even though I don't have just antenna? Okay, we'll take a stab at it. Henry, we, we appreciate the phone call, and we really like people who watch over-the-air television. Big core audience here. So, so he's talking about somehow it's, again, the, the idea of connecting Bluetooth 
TV to speaker? Yeah, Did so I get I, that right? I think what Henry was kind of talking about was he's got his antenna plugged into his TV, but it's, it's a smart TV. Um, so I think the missing aspect there is you got to get it on your Wi-Fi network in order to access those apps. Um, your antenna is just as simple as plugging in, doing channel scan, and you'll have access to all of those local stations at your disposal. Um, but for that smart TV aspect to come into play, it's got to be connected to the Wi-Fi. Yeah, and, and in terms of doing the channel scan, it's sometimes helpful to move the antenna, rescan depending where the... Uh, where the TV stations oh, are yeah. coming from. And get it as close to a window as you can. There you go. <laughs> All right, here's an email question. Yeah. Uh, this is from Joe, who said, I had a lot of fun playing the Nintendo 64 back in the day. <laughs> in your expert opinion, John, is the Nint Nintendo Switch more fun? Nintendo 64 was like, what, 64-bit? Oh, man, it was, it was the best. But in, in my professional I think I played opinion, Pong on yeah. that. <laughs> You might it was that or Frogger back in the day? <laughs> One of the two. I'll tell you what, if you like the Nintendo 64, um, you're going to absolutely love this. It's all the same stuff that, that Nintendo console gave to offer, and even more. And the biggest thing, too, is now when you're restricted to just a cord in your TV, it's all wireless. You can even step away from your TV and take it to go, which is so cool about these guys. So, now, definitely. Now, can you do similar stuff on a phone? I mean, there's so much processing power in even a year-old cell phone. Absolutely. Um, so even a smartphone will have a huge database of apps you can download, tons of different games that you can play, free and paid for. But yeah, gamers are getting into the, uh, the smartphone world as well. It's not just consoles anymore. We have about five minutes left. If you have a question about technology, give us a call or send an email. Let's talk about computers for a little bit. Sure. Um, mostly laptops is what you see in the store. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you see uh, Apple. You see uh, all sorts of, of Windows machines. You also see Chromebooks, yeah. which are a whole lot less. Mm -hmm. who, who are they for? So a Chromebook is a, is a laptop type of device um, made by Google. Um, Chromebooks are really good for seniors and students. And the reason why is because they, they operate a little bit differently. They operate only on the internet, which means that if your uh, needs revolve around um, sending emails, checking your Facebook, um, checking weather, whatever that may be, it's an awesome device because they keep the cost down. They don't get viruses, and they're very portable. Um, so they've been tremendously popular for like high school, middle school age students to take to and from school, um, as well as seniors, because they don't have to worry about all the complexity that computers can really get into. But if you're if you're doing gaming or Photoshop or something, yeah, it's not going to be the best option. You need more horsepower. You might need some more horsepower. That's right, Jeff. Uh, out to Montgomery County. This is Caroline. Caroline, thanks for the call. Go ahead. Uh, yes, um, I wanted to know. Um, uh, pre what the previous caller asked for, um, I'm using analog TV, and uh, I but I want to record shows. So, what do you recommend I I do for that? Say that again. How how do you get your your TV? Um, through the the old uh, digital box. Oh, okay. So you're you're paying a cable bill to somebody? No, no cable bill. Just uh, 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 regular analog or the the. Okay, uh, so over the air. Over the air. And you correct. want to record that? I want to record. How can I record shows? Okay. Is it possible? Thank you. Thank you very much. Boy, hmm. what was the name of the device before uh, DVRs? Those TiVos. TiVos, TiVos right. TiVos, yeah. And I've seen, I've seen other versions. I, I've seen a gizmo, and I can't tell you what it is, where you connect an external hard drive. The gizmo itself is cheap. And you plug in the hard drive, and it's a very inexpensive way to record over the air. And I can't tell you anymore because I don't remember it. Oh, man, I'm not too sure what that gizmo might be there. Um, you know, it, it, that brings me to the point that this stuff is hard to shop for. For, for. for the average person who's not a specialist in, in technology, uh, just getting up to speed enough to make a decision. It is one thing you, you guys in the brick and mortar store business mm -hmm. have an advantage over, over an internet store. Definitely. Because you can ask questions. Yeah, not only can you come in and put your hands on it, um, but you have experts there. It's definitely a daunting task. Stuff is very new and all works together some way. And that's what we're there for is to explain it and just make sure you get the right thing for yourself. Yeah, and you shouldn't be embarrassed to, to walk in. Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's take a call from Delaware, Sussex, Sussex County. Say that again. Alexa, how do you say Sussex County? This is Paul. <laughs> Paul, thanks for the call. Go ahead. Come on. It's Sussex. That's easy. <laughs> uh, I'm in my 70s, uh, and I have trouble hearing the regular speaker on television. I suspect you have a few other NPR listeners who have the same problem. Can you recommend a good wireless headset? 
Wireless, oh, interesting. Okay, thanks very much. So you'd be everybody, maybe many people in the room watching TV, and if somebody has hearing difficulty, they can listen uh, more directly. Yeah, definitely. So you got a couple different options. Assuming you don't want to just buy a sound bar and just blast everyone else out of the room, uh, or maybe you're trying to watch it at night and don't want to disturb your partner, they do make a pair of wireless headphones that can be used with TVs, which are absolutely awesome. Uh, my go-to recommendation would be a pair from Sony. Um, also, if you're looking to save some money, our Insignia store brand has some really good options as well. Um, but both will make sure that you're not blasting anyone out of the room and you'll be able to hear what's going on a little bit better. All right, let me, uh, we got a bunch of emails here. Uh, best Bluetooth headphones for working out? Oh, very good question. Um, so my- and, and at the same time, what do you yeah. think about earbuds? So earbuds are awesome. And when it comes to working out, you'll see a lot more people wearing earbuds than something that's over ear, like the Bose we were talking about earlier. And that's just because they're a little bit more comfortable than having something around your head. My go-to for anything working out, exercise earbuds are the Jaybirds. Uh, Jaybird is a company that is known for not only their sound quality, but also their fit. Uh, a lock-in fit is crucial when you're talking about the fitness atmosphere right. because you're always running and jumping, whatever you may be doing. So if you have something that's going to fall out, it's not going to get the job done. But with these Jaybirds, they have several different size tips and buds to make sure they fit in just about everyone's ear. All right, John Moffat from uh, Best Buy, good enough to break away from the store for a little bit. It's going to take all this stuff back and, and go find a nice home for it. Here we go. John, <laughs> thanks for the time. We Absolutely. appreciate Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Thanks for joining us for Direct Connection tonight. We're back Thursday with your money and business. And join us Friday for State Circle and the latest on Maryland politics. Thanks for watching and have a good night. This program was made by MPT to serve all of our diverse communities.